Hi guys! This week we're going to start a project that is going to take us two weeks to complete. So, before you even think about anything else, know that when you draw this this week, you are not going to lose it. You're not going to throw it away, get rid of it, put it somewhere where you don't know where it is, anything like that, because you need this project to continue next week. This week we're only going to complete part of it because it's a big project, and if we were doing it in class, we would take at least two weeks to complete this and um, you need that time to do it. it. It's not just a really quick piece of art, but you can come out with something beautiful when you're done. Because you guys are in hybrid and some of you guys will be working on this at home, feel free to use whatever materials you would like to use. If we were doing this project in class, we usually do it in oil pastel, which is really fun to blend colors and it takes a while to um, get all that color on there, but it makes a beautiful piece of art. Um, things I would recommend for this are anything with beautiful colors. You can do it even in marker, but in class we've also done it before in watercolors, which comes out really, really gorgeous. Um, just anything that you want, but you will want to have color for this project. You don't want it to just be a pencil drawing. So your finished project that you turn in should have some color. If you don't have something to color with, like you don't have crayons or markers or anything like that, then yes, you can use Sketchbook as well, which gives you lots of options for different colors and textures. So Sketchbook is a great thing to use. It's a little harder to control those lines in Sketchbook. So if you can, I would really recommend working with something physical, like a, a actual piece of paper that you can put your hands on and that makes it easier to do this project. Um, that said, it seems like it's a complicated project. It seems kind of hard, but drawing flowers, which is what we're gonna do, um, flowers are really a natural thing and their petals bend in different ways and shapes and so we'll kind of follow a few rules as far as we do these flowers but it's okay for them to not be perfect because in nature flowers do not look perfect so if your flowers look kind of really far from perfect even sometimes that makes it look the most realistic and the best because if your flower petals are just too much the same it just doesn't look natural so as we do this just remember that just chill out okay it's nothing to get stressed about oh my flowers aren't perfect they can just be natural and they'll be beautiful like that and so long as you're not too messy with your lines like having lines that crisscross all over each other and stuff like that, you should come out with something really, really beautiful. This exercise is going to help us learn a lot about drawing behind it. Really, really flexes that muscle so that we have to be able to do it really well in order for the project to come out. And um, that is great practice for you because drawing behind or the skill of overlapping things is so, so important to art. So I hope that you guys are going to love this. We usually come out with beautiful pieces when we do this in class and I bet you guys are come out, going to come out with beautiful pieces this time. So um, just again, do not throw these away or get rid of them in between this week and next week because you will continue this project next week. So um, you need a paper, something to create your art with and we will be doing this in class as well so you don't have to watch this whole video and do this at home if you're going to work on it in class you'll probably still want to continue to work on it at home a little bit because our class periods are shorter than normal but um we'll get started in class so you don't again you don't need this video unless you're completely remote and you're not able to come to class or you miss class for some reason so um to start out with we're going to start um, by looking at some flower pictures and so in class I'll be showing you guys some flower pictures close up but you can also look at this video that I've attached that has it's like wild flowers and it's got pretty music and it goes for like an hour and some odd you don't need to sit there for an hour staring at these wildflowers or whatever but you can skip through and check them out and look at all the different kinds of flowers because as an artist one of the first things that we need to do is look at what we're gonna draw know what it looks like know what the options and the varieties are and once you know that then you can kind of start drawing those and so as we draw this project I just want to be clear that I don't want you guys to copy me exactly so it's a process, but as we do this process and you kind of follow the steps and the rules of the process, you're also going to have the options to create whatever kinds of flowers you like. So if you looked 
add a bunch of flower pictures and you're all like, tulips, I love tulips, that's my favorite flower, or irises, or whatever your favorite flower was. Maybe you don't know what it's called, but it was really pretty. Put those in there. You know, you're just gonna draw the ones that you like, draw as many different kinds as you like, and I'll be showing you guys some different ways to draw different kinds of flowers, but you might come up with something that's entirely your own and that's fine as well. So we're gonna get started. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw a bunch of overlapping flowers. They're going to eventually be in a vase, but don't jump ahead of me and start adding other things, okay? Because we got we have to like follow the steps of the process in order for things to end up looking right. So next week we're gonna add that extra stuff like the vase and all that. But by the time that we're done this week, what we should see is a bunch of overlapping flowers. They're just all like in a big kind of cloud of overlapping flowers. And that will give us like this full kind of three-dimensional look. And then later on we'll add the vase to them. We'll add some shading, we'll add all our color and hopefully come out with something really, really beautiful. Alrighty guys, have fun. Okay, the first thing that you guys need to know is that this is supposed to be my paper. So I'm doing this in sketchbook. I'm not using this whole canvas. I'm just pretending like this is my paper. So you don't want to draw a rectangle um, and you don't want to write my paper. You just pretend like this is my paper. And the reason why is to give you an idea of approximately where we're going to draw stuff. So the first thing that I want to point out to you guys is that... Um, we're going to be using a certain area of our paper for this, okay? And that area is going to be from, I'm just going to go like right up, whoops, let me get a new layer here so that I can work this. Okay, so we're kind of, this week, we're using about this much of our paper, okay? So if I fill this so you guys can see. This black part is about where we're drawing. We don't want to draw, <clears throat> excuse me, down here much this week. We want to kind of leave this space for where our stuff is going to be next week that we're going to add, okay? Um, but we do want to use probably the top two thirds of our paper and we're going to fill it right up with all our overlapping flowers. It is fine if your flowers go a bit off your page, okay? So you don't need to color this black, but that's just to give you an idea of where we're gonna kind of fill up our flowers. So let me just get rid of that. And what we're gonna do is we're going to start, whoops, didn't mean to do that. We're gonna start by drawing us some flowers. So first I need a, something to write with. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so that you guys can see a little better. Hold on. I don't want to make my paper go off the page because I still want you guys to be able to see. So we're going to start by filling up our flowers here. And the first flower that we um, do is going to be the flower that's most in the front because as we add more flowers, everything else is going to be drawn behind. So I'm going to start kind of in the middle of my page somewhere and give myself a flower to focus on. So we'll start out with a nice easy flower and I'm gonna make mine pretty big. I'm gonna make a nice big sunflower to start out with. So I'm gonna give myself an oval. Actually, I'm just gonna make my brush a little bit bigger. I made it smaller for something. I just want a little bit thicker of a line. So we're gonna start I'm gonna do an oval. I know the center of a flower is a circle, but if your flower is facing exactly straight forward, then it looks less natural. So I'm gonna show you guys what I meant before when I said that flowers could be kind of unnatural. So the petals can be wobbly, okay? So if I'm making a sunflower, sunflowers usually have pretty small petals compared to the center circle so actually I'm going to undo that I'm going to make these petals a little bit smaller but that's not perfect so what I'm going to show you guys over here is a flower petal shape um, basically you know flowers are a lot of flowers at any rate are similar they have a circle middle and then they have petals that go around them and the petals could be pointed or they could be rounded or they could be you know some of them get 
like kind of fancy or they might have wavy edges, crinkly edges. Okay, there's lots and lots of different shapes to flower petals. And within these shapes, they could be longer or shorter. So like if this one was shorter but pointy, it might be like that. If it was longer but pointy, it might be like that, like long and skinny. And changing how long it is and changing the shape of it will give you a different flower. But the thing is to remember that once you choose a type of petal for your flower, they're pretty much gonna be the same all the way around. So if you are doing a perfect or a kind of perfect flower and I choose my petals to be like this, then I wanna do those all the way around. And if you're working on paper, it helps to turn your paper as you go because otherwise what, what happens, and I'll just do this really quick, is I start to see petals that go up <laughs> and they're all pointed up and then kids get really confused with like the direction of the petals and they should be going like this way over here. So if you're trying to be perfect with your flower, which isn't always a good idea, you know, and you can't turn your paper, like say you're working in sketchbook or whatever, you could give yourself some kind of guides. And this is just gonna draw over that right now, pretend like that's not there, to kind of get things going in the right direction and then fill in in between them would be an easy way to go. You don't want gaps, obviously, so you know, you would just fill in your petals as you go. And this one's getting kind of sloppy, but just to give you the idea. So this flower's a more perfect kind of flower. It's all in the right directions. But the joy of creating flowers and drawing flowers is that in nature, because flowers, their petals are moved by the wind and they're um, sometimes eaten by bugs and sometimes crinkled by the sun or some of them fall off. Flower petals don't actually look all perfect like that in nature. So don't worry about your flower petals being too perfect. What you don't want is like, you guys saw how I got sloppy. See how this is sloppy? My things are, my lines are crossing. I don't wanna be sloppy like that. It's okay if my circle's not perfect, but I don't want my lines to be sloppy. So the other thing is like when I'm putting my flower petals on here, it's okay if they're kind of wonky like that. But what I don't want is to like do that where I have these lines sticking over the center or do this where they're crisscrossing each other. That doesn't look right. So if I do that, then I need to go in and fix this because the lines should never be crisscrossing each other. So if I did this, I'll have to zoom in more here. I gotta change my eraser size so that I can actually get in here and do this. One of these lines has to go, okay? They should not be crisscrossed. So I'm gonna get rid of that and get rid of that. And now that's okay because this one is in front of this one and this one draws behind, but you should never have crisscrosses and you shouldn't cross your lines here. So I would wanna get rid of these and that to make that more neat. So this kind of sloppy is okay, but not where they're crisscrossing. So that's exactly what you don't want. Okay, so uh, it's hard to zoom in and out over here with, without losing what you're trying to do. So, okay. So back to this flower, you know, and I just try and make them about the same size and about the same pointiness. But again, look, my lines are getting wobbly. I might even have a gap in there. Whoops, a petal fell out of my flower. If you um, look at some famous paintings, like Van Gogh, a very, very famous artist, he did, um, all these really, really famous paintings. It was a series of sunflower paintings. And one of the things that he did was he painted some of the flowers dying. And it was kind of a commentary on, you know, life and death and things like that. Not, you know, things don't last forever. Flowers don't last forever. But the paintings were still beautiful and they looked real and they were, um, they became really, really famous. So, you know, it's okay to have imperfection in art but what you don't want is sloppiness. There's a difference, okay? So if I'm doing my flower here, this could be my sunflower with my petals like that, or if I want some flower, some flowers, not sunflowers, have a double layer of petals. So they might 
There might be some petals that go behind those petals. Some flowers even have a whole nother layer. So if you went around like this and then you put this layer in, you might have another layer back here. Okay, and so that's your other option for changing up how your flowers look. So if this, I'll just do a few more of these to give you guys kind of the idea, you know, so that would be your second row. And then you might even have a third row. And once I get back here, again, because flowers aren't perfect, you don't want it to be too perfect or it won't look real. But you could do as many rows. I mean, I have kids that love to do these flowers that fill up the whole page and they just keep adding and adding rows of petals and those can look really pretty as well. So that's up to you. And um, there are definitely lots of different kinds of flowers that have different things. So here's another thing as far as sloppiness goes and I'll zoom in here. This is another sloppy thing that I don't want when I'm drawing my flowers is gaps between my lines. So connect, let everything connect. Okay, so if you really look at this, well, I got a gap down there. So if I'm gonna be a good artist, you know, I wanna connect those gaps, try and, and make them look like they're supposed to be and fix where I accidentally overlapped, where I don't want to, like where I crisscrossed anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my petals, my not perfect petals. Sometimes petals bend even, so maybe this one bent, okay? And maybe the wind's pushing it that way, so maybe I'll bend a couple of them. And then that kind of, see it's really not perfect now. It doesn't even go exactly where it should go, so I'm just making these ones bend. Maybe this one's bending down. Okay, so not perfect, not supposed to be perfect. Having them less than perfect is great because it's gonna look better in the end. So once you have each flower done, you wanna look for the things that you shouldn't have. Like if you see right here, that line crisscross just a little bit. Let's see it. I don't know what that is right there, how that got there, but we'll get rid of that. So look for the things that should not be happening. But, um, sorry, trying to get this more in the center of our page. And then there you have a flower. And you can add as many layers as you want. Do you have to have a sunflower in the middle of your page? No, you could have a rose or a daisy or whatever other kind of flower you wanna draw, a tulip. A sunflower is a nice one to start with because it's nice and big and <clears throat> Now we're gonna start filling in other flowers. So once you have one flower, I'm trying to make this so that it's big enough for me to work on, but also kind of in the center so you guys can see my whole paper. Okay, so remember this right here is the area that we want to work on. <clears throat> and so now, as I work on this, my job this week, today, is to fill in a bunch of flowers around here, one at a time whatever different kinds of flowers you want. If you wanted to only put some flowers, that's fine. But if you wanna put all different kinds of flowers, it really looks cool to do that. So I want you guys to think about what different kinds of flowers you could make. You might not even have names for them, but if you follow this formula that there's a circle and you choose a type or a shape of petal and you put that all the way around and then you decide, do I want one row or two rows or three rows? that will give you a ton of different kinds of flower styles to choose from, okay? But aside from that, there are other flowers that don't have a circle center. There are flowers like tulips, and they might look kind of like that, something like that, okay? I know a lot of people um, will draw this shape and then ee, 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 ee. That's not really what a tulip looks like. They're more a little more crinkly and they do have petals. And this part of them is like a V shape and then their stems are straight. We're not gonna worry too much about stems today either. We're gonna kind of put them in um, after we've, we've done some flowers. Okay, so some, the thing is, our base is gonna be here and we're not gonna see the stems of a lot of our flowers. So we might draw stems for some and I'll kind of show you as we go where we might need to start drawing stems. It is a good idea for the ones, if you're gonna have um, flowers that are kind of really in the front or 
um, sticking over the edges and stuff like that to have some stems in place as you go with the, the flower overlapping. But most of this area is gonna be filled up with so many flowers that we're not gonna have room for stems. So, okay, as we continue, once you have your first flower, then you're gonna choose another kind of flower. So I'm gonna do a tulip. And I'm gonna say it's a little bit taller and a little bit smaller because I'm thinking this is a sunflower. So for me, sunflowers are really big. They can be like the size of a dinner plate. Okay, so tulips aren't that big. So I'm gonna make it the right proportion to my sunflower. So I'm gonna make it smaller, but I'm gonna have a tulip up here. And I'm gonna do my kind of so this makes, if you look at this, it's kind of like a, the letter Y. Okay, so another way to do it is to do a U shape and then do just kind of a crinkly letter Y and then a jaggedy line in between. Okay, and that'll give you a more realistic looking tulip. And then um, you would have your V shape and stuff down here. But here's the thing. I don't want to draw, if I was drawing the stem for this, I wouldn't want to draw it like this because my vase, the opening is going to be like right here. Okay, so it would need to point towards that. So I would be wrong if I was putting a, a tulip like that. Actually, I even feel like having drawn this, like my tulip's kind of tilted the wrong way for being in this vase. So I'm going to go back and make my tulip a little more tilted that way. And so I'm going to do it like this, do the U shape. Do a crinkly Y and my there. So now this tulip is more ready to be this way going towards the base area right here, the opening of the base. So I do want to think of that as I draw whatever flowers I like. I'm going to go ahead and give this a little bit of a stem. Okay. So I'm going to leave some room to put in another flower here because I want to have a lot of flowers around the front of my vase, so because we don't even want to be able to see the front of the vase. So I put a little bit of a stem, but not too much. Now I'm gonna put another flower here, and I know that this I'm gonna have this area, so I'm gonna go ahead and put whatever petal I think I would have here, and I'm gonna put the center, and I'm just gonna make kind of fatter petals on this one. It's almost like a star. And I'm just putting the single layer on that one. I think that looks good. Close up my gaps, look for messiness. Did I get messy in a way that I shouldn't have? Fix that, right? Fix my line there a little bit. Okay, so now I'm more ready for my next ones. So what else am I gonna do? Um, I'm going to go ahead and add some more flowers. So here's the thing now. My, this flower didn't take up too much room. So actually, you know what I'm gonna decide? I'm gonna put another layer of petals there on this one. And the reason why is because it's gonna take up a little more space to kind of block out where that stem's gonna be. So I don't even have to worry about it so much later, but I would see just a little bit of stem. See if I draw behind that petal, see that little bit of stem. And then I don't even have to worry about so much right now. If I wanted to now, I could go ahead and make this, the rest of the stem kind of going down here see where it would draw behind and put some of it down there okay um, you don't need to worry about too much about the stems it's because we're just gonna keep filling it up with flowers so these flowers did not overlap this one only overlapped the stem a little bit now I really want to start overlapping so the thing is that when kids do this drawing a lot of times they try and space out their flowers like they go okay i'm gonna put a flower next to this one so i'm gonna make sure that i have plenty of room so that this is like where my flower would be like this area okay so just to kind of show you guys petals going that way and so there's space but we don't want space so if we're thinking about where will the next flower go i want it to be like okay my next flower is going to be here it's going to be overlapping so I'm going to draw, well, let's just redo that so I'll show you. If my next flower is going to be here, then this is where the center would be. And that's right almost on top of these petals. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the center of my next flower right there. Maybe this will be a daisy. So daisies, you know, their centers compared to their petals, um, the petals are a lot longer than 
on the sunflower. The sunflower has a big center and fairly short petals, where the daisy has a smaller center and pretty long petals compared to it. So again, it's okay if these get kind of crinkly. And here's the thing. Now, as I start to get over here, these petals have to go behind the sunflower. So I'm just gonna draw like until I get to the sunflower, then draw in the air until I come out the other side. And then keep drawing. And remember, we're not squishing things in. Let them go behind. Don't try and fit them around your flower because your other flowers, because that's where you're gonna go wrong. Okay, um, just bring another pe petal in here and maybe another one there where we'd see it would come out here. See that? So it goes behind what's there already. And I just feel like I want to fill it in a little bit more, make, make it a little more dense. So I'm going to put in just a few more petals in here to kind of make it a little more full looking. Maybe one here. You know, maybe another one back behind there. So and now I just keep adding more. <laughs> okay, so I like that now. So now this flower you see is behind this and what I never do is I'm not allowed to draw on top of any flowers that I already have. So you squish your flowers together and you've got to stop and draw behind anything. Now I check to see, did I get messy? Whoops, I overlapped a little bit there where I didn't want you know those lines to go crisscrossing. So I've got to be careful with that. Look here, I messed this up. I've got to be really careful with that. This looks messy up here. This kind of neatness is important to make a beautiful drawing, but again, there's a difference between neatness and perfect flowers. My flowers are so far from perfect, but I'm trying to keep my lines neat. So if I look at my center here and I see, I went across it a little bit there. My, my lines don't connect right here. Fixing those things can really, really improve your art a lot. So here I can say like my, my stem got pretty messy. I wanna just fix it. I was kind of sketching it as I went, but you know, now I know like that's where I want it so I can get rid of some of the messiness and make those lines a little bit nicer. So, it's so hard to get this to go where I want it to. Let me go way down here. Okay. So, now I'm starting to get some flowers filled in, and I'm just going to keep going. I'm not going to keep talking as I go, so I'm going to speed up the video at this point so that you guys aren't here forever if you're watching this. And you're just going to keep filling in flowers, whatever kind you want, until you fill up this whole area up here with flowers. Alrighty guys, so once you get this filled up with flowers and you have this space free still, then you are done for this week. So you guys might notice I put in some just like branches with leaves as well. So if you see a flower arrangement, any kind of vase, there's sometimes branches, there's sometimes grass, like pieces of, of fluffy grass look really pretty. Um, lots of different kinds of flowers and most of them don't have stems. So some of them you could see I added a little bit of stems onto the roses here a little bit of stem just on the places wherever it shows in between flowers like any place where you have an empty space 
and just remember that all your stems I'm do this in another color so that you guys can see. All your stems should be pointing this way, okay, towards this center right here, because this is where our vase is going to end up being. So you'll notice that if I have flowers that are hanging over the side or whatever, their stems are still pointing that way, because if, if this is coming over the side of my vase, it'll be that way. On these ones, you won't even see the stems so much, so um, if there was a space, it would go into just figure like there's a center where your um, opening for your vase is going to be. So once you get your flowers all filled up and they're nice and neat, you've you know gotten rid of any problems that you have, then you are done for this week. So make sure that you save your work. Um, once you've saved your work, then you're also going to attach what you've done for this week to your assignment and turn it in. Alrighty guys, don't forget, if you draw on paper, save this for next week because we are going to continue this and finish our beautiful flower drawing and I think you guys are going to love what you come out with.